Welcome back and an update on our Bridgeport Motor Build with our friend Joe Ferguson of RPM Motorsports. So the last time we saw our motor build, Joe was busy porting it. Since then our friends at Goopy Performance stepped up and uh, helped us out with the solid dowel pins and oversized stud kit. Now Joe, what needed to be done to our housings and irons to make those parts fit? Yeah, so obviously you can tell the, the Goopy stud kit is uh, a lot larger than the, the factory uh, tension bolt. Um, so the, the rotor housings uh, and uh, irons needed to be machined out uh, uh, to accept the larger stud. Um, in, in doing that, it, uh, <clears throat> it, it keeps the motor from twisting, um, makes the motor a lot sol more solid, um, holds the motor together too under like really high boost applications, I guess. Um, you know, the, obviously the, the factory uh, threads in here are just tapped into here. Once, uh, once the whole motor is assembled, you actually have nuts uh, hardware on either side. It squeezes the whole motor together, keeps it all, uh, all snug. And then the, uh, the solid dowel pins is like an, an addition to that. Um, some guys would probably just use the factory uh, tension bolt and go to a solid dowel pin. Um, as you can tell, the factory dowel pins are hollow um, and are in two pieces. So once you put the solid dowel pin in there, there's no chance of the motor uh, flexing or having these uh, move. So what are you saying with the addition of these beefier studs, we can run more boost in this motor? Sure can, yeah. Yeah, it'll hold it all together. Um, one thing to, to note about the solid dowel pins, when you do uh, two of them uh, to replace all four of the factory dowels, is uh, the, the, the top dowels that go through the motor are hollow for a reason. Uh, oil actually flows from the rear oil filter uh, at the back of the motor, flows forward and feeds the uh, front stationary gear, the front bearing. So once you go to a solid dowel pin, uh, no oil can get to that front bearing. Um, so, what we have done is we have machined uh, the factory machine hole out to accept a, uh, a dash six ORB fitting. So we'll actually externally feed the front, uh, the front stationary gear uh, from an external uh, oil feed line. So we, we showed you the initial cutting of the bridge port itself. Um, once you have the rotor housing uh, sitting down on top of the iron, you can see that the actual housing is covering a portion of the bridge port. Now, this bridge port we haven't gone too crazy with. We haven't gone really far into the water jacket or anything like that. So it, it's fairly mild what we have to do. Um, but uh, I do have a modified housing here already with the scallop put into it. Now you can see how the, uh, the bridge port, now the full port is fully open and uh, all the air and fuel mixture that's coming through there has a nice path to flow through. All right, so the next step now is uh, to finish the porting before we move on to the next step of the procedure of building the motor, uh, clearancing all the side seals and apex seals. So I've got a lot of porting left to do here. So I'll see you guys maybe in a few days. <laughs> Send it. Send it. All right, we, we promised you some, uh, some secrets and tips on how to clearance side seals, and Joe's gonna give us a little lesson here on how he does it. Yes, sir. New Mazda side seals come extra long. They're, uh, if, if I put this down into this uh, side seal groove here, you will see that it does not fit down that, uh, into that corner seal. Mm -hmm. Too long. So we gotta, we gotta machine this down. Now you can see on this end how it fits nice and tightly to that corner seal. Yeah. It's got like a little, uh, a little radius or a curve to it. Yes. And uh, I can show you, hopefully, maybe you can see this. Uh, so that end's shiny. Yeah. It's got a shine to it. So that's the radius. So that, that's a Mazda, Mazda's already um, pre-cut like, pre that as, a, as a, a rounded edge. Okay. This end is like more squared off. Mm -hmm. So this is the end you want to start clearancing from to okay. try to take material away from this to fit it into that side. Since it doesn't fit, it's too long. Yeah. I've got this fancy little, uh, it's actually a wet wheel sharpener. I don't even know where I got it from. Okay. Garage it, sale somewhere? <laughs> probably. For, for like a dollar, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, it's got this really fine uh, wheel on it that, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's meant for sharpening blades or knives or whatever. Um, it works really, really well. It gives a really good finish, a nice, nice sharp um, 
a, a shiny finish like the Mazda tool so, okay. or Mazda end. So yeah. we'll uh, I'll just start taking this off and. Uh, and this is kind of nice because because these are a nice uh, a square seal, you can set it on here and butt it up against there, and then it gives you a nice perfect ninety degree I see. Um, cut. Okay, so you can uh, I don't know if you can see that now. Yeah. It's got a nice little... Uh, yeah, just like the other end. Just like the other end. So, so you have to keep doing that until you get to the right length. Ex right? Exactly. So I'm going to slide that factory side in now. It actually fits. Oh, man. Just by taking that off. But here's the tricky part. It's too tight. I can already tell that it's too tight of a clearance. You can see by me pushing up and down on this, mm -hmm. I'm actually moving that corner seal. Yes. That corner seal is moving around. Yeah. So that tells me there's not enough clearance right okay. away. I don't even have to put a feeler gauge or anything like that on there. So, so you take a little more off with I'm gonna, the, I'm gonna pull, the sharpener. Pull this back out, take a touch more off with the sharpener. That's probably all we need, maybe. Now, they'll doing this, they'll probably you'll end up with a little bit of a burr right on the very end. So mm -hmm. this little sharpener actually has a honing stone. Oh, look at that. This thing, was, this thing was meant for <laughs> rotary engines. So I just give it a little touch there to get rid of that burr yeah. and uh, drop this back into the, the groove here. Okay, so now you can see as I'm pushing this, uh, it's still it's just, still still just slightly, tightly, yeah. slightly moving that, but the, the side seal itself is moving freely all the way along. Yeah. Nice, uh, nice movement there at the end. It's actually not even, uh, not even touching that uh, corner, the corner seal, but it is just was just slightly touching that one. Now I'm gonna just try sliding it back and forth. I don't really have a lot of wiggle room there. It's probably at this point, it's probably still too tight. So is there a clearance spec that you need to get between the corner seal and the end of that? There is, yeah. There's, uh, I believe the factory manual recommends. Anywhere from I think a thou and a half or two thou up to like three or four okay. for like the older motors. Yeah. Generally for a naturally aspirated motor, you're gonna want a tighter clearance mm -hmm. um, for uh, for maximum compression. On a turbocharged car, um, a lot more factors come into play. There's heat, uh, boost, so you can run with a lot looser clearance. That way, nothing binds up when the when the heat combustion chamber uh, heats up and, and everything expands. Generally, I like to go with like a two thou clearance. Getting a feeler gauge in between yeah. the corner seal and the side seal yeah. is is pretty tricky. I mean, there's only a small amount of that side yeah. seal protruding out of there. Yeah. But I mean, if you can get a feeler gauge to, to slide through there, a two thou feeler gauge to slide in between there. And, and if you rock the side seal back and forth yeah. and you're not having any binding issues or, or you're not disturbing that, that corner seal, yeah. Uh, generally, you're, you're you're good to go. You're good to go. Now that this side seal is clearanced for this spot, I would put a mark the way I've got here already mm -hmm. to know that that side seal goes in that spot. Right. Because chances are, now that that's cut to this length, mm -hmm. if you put it in this groove over here, there's a possibility it's going to be too loose. Right. Or too tight. Right. And then the same on the other side of the rotor when you mm -hmm. flip it over. Yeah. So that's why I mark all these. Everything goes back in the exact spot that it's supposed to, and then you're good. Looks like we're about to build a rotary engine here, Joe. Yes, sir. So the assembly's back from balancing and the yep. irons are back from coating. Yep, we, uh, they're gas nitrided after we did the, the lapping, the grinding on them. Uh, make them nice and smooth and uh, straight and flat. So You can see those bridge ports are all nice and pretty now. Mm -hmm. So these yeah, are ready to slam together? Yep, yeah, we're ready to ready to stack this motor all together. Everything's all cleaned and prepped and ready to go. We got the, the front iron started here. Just coated it up with some Vaseline, got the oil, uh, the coolant seals in place, a little bit of RTV sealant on the, the legs, and we're ready. All right. We've, uh, we've shown you guys uh, Joe building a rotary before, so we're not going to do this one step by step. We'll just kind of show you the major steps, mm -hmm. and then we can get this guy to install the motor so we can make some major power. Look at that. Look at all that horsepower. That's where the horsepower comes in, <laughs> and then it goes out this big oval hole over here. Yeah, and then it comes out right... You looked... Ow! There goes your triangle of power, everybody. The Dorito is in. The Dorito is in. So now I actually have to remove some parts to continue with the build. Oh, oh. oh how strange. Yes. So these corner seals are going to come back out. And then the apex seal, oh. I've actually got to take a 
needle nose pliers and pull it out. So I'm just gonna gently remove this. And what I gotta do is actually install the springs in under there. On this apex seal, that's one piece. So the, there is no little corner triangle like some of the uh, two piece apex seals are. And we need to get two uh, springs. There's a, a center groove there where the one spring sits and then the outside groove where the other longer spring sits. So you can't put those springs in when the apex seal is installed. Mm -hmm. Now the reason I put the apex seal in and then install the, the rotor is because the corner seals on the bottom side of the rotor, if I keep the apex seal out and I put the, the rotor in place and you know you kind of wiggle it around a little bit, the corner seal could turn a little bit. Yeah. And once that bottom corner seal turns a little bit, you go to put the apex seal down, now that groove is not lined up with right, the, the hole. Right. And then you basically gotta remove it Turn the, turn the corner seal back. So it's so much easier just to do this, pull the seal up, put the springs in, put it back down, and then everything's all, all lined up. All nice. lined up. Looks like the E shaft is in there. That's what this uh, phallic symbol is sticking out through the middle of the motor. <laughs> That's like the uh, equivalent of a crankshaft. Crankshaft, yep. And it's time, I guess, to put the center iron, the center in, iron in here. Which is now that we've got half the motor built, we're going to actually install these goopy solid dowel pins. Um, the reason we didn't put those in first was that, that putting that center iron on would have been very, very tricky uh, doing that with those, those pins and I wanted everything lined up. So I've actually installed the factory dowels, which are going to be tricky to get out of here now. There we go. Okay. okay. So there's the one and that one's just going to go down. So being a solid pin, I guess, makes it much stronger than a hollow one? Yeah, well, uh, stronger than a hollow one, also it's a one-piece dowel. As a one-piece, yeah. there is no... Joint in the middle. There's no joint, so... Which makes it stronger. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. I slid onto those big old dowel pins like... Goopy dowels. Like cake. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. close here, Joe, or at least... Yeah. Visually close. Visually very, very close. So uh, one more iron. Rear rotor's built, ready to go. We just need to drop it in, put the springs in the apex seals, rear iron on, and then we put the through bolts in, and then we also have the goopy, uh, um, the full through bolts that go right through the whole motor, nuts on either end. Those will go in before we torque up the, uh, the factory bolts. So these go straight from the back of the motor all the way right into the front. And they are machined, oh, tight fit. There you go. And then, from this side, nut and washer. And we tighten those down. Well, with those goopy uh, studs in there, these two studs are calling it a wrap, or at least I am. Calling it done. It's, uh, what's left, Joe? Uh, what's left to do, we gotta uh, assemble the front stack. Um, the front stack consists of uh, a couple gears and the chain drive for the oil pump. Um, front pulley hub. And then we just check the end plate to make sure it's uh, within spec. And then the front cover goes on and oil pan, flywheel. Drop All it in stuff the car. we showed you in our original How to Build a Rotary Engine video. So I'll put a link to that one in the description. And uh, the next time you see this, it's going to be in Ken's car. We're going to throw a bunch of boost at it. How much power, Ken? Predictions. Um, Give I me a number. Know. Come on. Give me a number. 500. Five million horsepower. Why make trillions when we could make billions? I'm trying to be conservative in case right. we don't hit that number. 500, <laughs> 500 or we're not friends anymore. <laughs> Done deal. All right, Joe, thanks again, buddy. No worries. We'll see you on the next one. All right, sounds good. Building rotaries. You hit it with a hammer. Make it, make it go in the hole. This is building rotaries. I don't know if I'm going any further, Joe. What the <laughs> Hit it harder with a bigger hammer. This is building rotary. Alright, listen to that, that for Joe. Good job, you hammerhead.